Tim Mayot, advancing yesterday in the quarterfinals of the Payne Weber Classic. The handsome 25-year-old from Springfield, Massachusetts, used his big serve and volley game to beat Greg Holmes. Mayotte, currently ranked 17th in the world, recovering from a rib injury, is in search of his second pro singles title. He advanced yesterday by surviving a third set tiebreaker against Holmes. He won it at the net. He'll be on the attack again in today's semifinal against veteran Jimmy Connors. Last night in the wind and cold at Sanibel Harbor, the 33-year-old Connors disposed of unknown Todd Witzkin by using his strengths, return of service, and all-out hustle. Connors, currently ranked fourth in the world, is hungry. He hasn't won a tournament in a year and a half, the longest drought of his great career. Today, he continues his march on his home court, meeting the big hitting Tim Mayotte. From Sanibel Harbor Resort in Fort Myers, Florida, it's the semifinals of the Payne Weber Classic. Today's action is brought to you. Welcome to semifinal Saturday at Jimmy Connors Tennis Stadium here at Sanibel Harbor. It's semifinal day, and we already can update you, Dick Enberg, with Bud Collins on the first match today. The defending champion, Yvonne Lendl, who has not dropped a set in the entire championships, is into tomorrow's finals, and we'll meet the match we're about to see. Lendl defeated Andres Gomez 6-3 and 6-3 and came to the net, Bud Collins, at times, and uh, very he effectively. Did. The chip and charging Czechoslovak. We were stunned. He says he's been practicing it you were going to see more of it all right tim mayot currently number 17 on the world rankings he's got back after a six-week layoff with a rib injury against jimmy connors who is still without a victory in a year and a half i think for jimmy connors this is a crisis of confidence match 33 years old nothing has happened to him since he won his first tournament at nine nothing like this 17 months without a tournament victory He's got to be wondering, when am I going to win another tournament? And I think this might be the reason he blew up at Boca Raton 30, three, uh, 30 days ago and walked off the court. But it's not time to get out the shovel and bury Jimmy no, Connors. Because... He's still number four, and Tim Mayotte would love to have that position. Oh, that's right. Here's Tim Mayotte, the paragon of the Pioneer Valley. Since 1981, we've been saying, watch Mayotte. Now, this is his biggest chance on television. He won Delray Beach last year by beating Scott Davis, but... To beat Jimmy Connors here in Jimmy Connors' ballpark, that would be a great triumph for Tim Mayotte. Mayotte against Connors head-to-head. -head. He's won two of their seven matches. Jimmy Connors looking for a chance on his home court. He's a touring court representing Sanibel Harbor, trying to get to the finals against Lendl, against Tim Mayotte, the opening game in just a moment. Continuing coverage of tennis on NBC that will lead us, of course, on to the Grand Slam events, the French Open, and to Wimbledon. And during the course of our year, we're going to call upon the rather remarkable insights of my colleague, Bud Collins, who has covered this sport for a couple of decades with the Boston Globe and, of course, as a television commentator. He will be addressing various issues during the next couple of months. And today, he looks at whether or not, in the men's game, the tennis elite operate under a double standard. There's a feeling among those who follow men's tennis that the big guys get away with murder in their misbehavior. This isn't exactly murder, but it is what I would call a violation of the first commandment of tennis. Thou shalt not quit a match unless injured. This is Jimmy Connors one month ago in Boca Raton. He disagrees with an umpire, refuses to play further against Yvonne Lendl, and is defaulted. This is one month ago. What's happened? The process for handing out a penalty is sadly slow. Now, Connors and McEnroe and Lendl have all been suspended during their time but the feeling is that these suspensions were meaningless they happened during times when they did not intend to play so that they could just laugh as we laugh when we heard about these suspensions now we understand that a decision has been made on connor's what is it connor's won't say the pro consul won't say when will they say meanwhile connor's continues to play in the Payne weber a tournament with which he is closely associated the feeling is that these guys get a little better treatment than everybody else. My feeling is, is that it's just a big giggle. And perhaps swallowing that smile, Jimmy Connors, ready in this semifinal match. Connors now 33. He's the gray beard in the men's tour. Defeated Mike Leach uh, in three sets after dropping the first set. And John Lloyd and Todd Witzkin, University of Southern California, wild card last night, 6-3-6 love. Did you call him an unknown? <laughs> I thought I heard that. He's the greatest player in the history of Carmel, Indiana, Todd Witzkin. That is true. 
Meanwhile, Tim Mayotte from your part of the world, Springfield, Massachusetts, 25 years of age. Good looking young man who plays out of Braden, Florida, here nearby. There he is. Scott Davis. Scott Davis, whom he beat in that final at Delray last year. Now, Jaime Izaga, remember that name? An 18-year-old Peruvian, the only guy to win a set from Lendl at the U.S. Open. Greg Holmes, former NCAA champion, and Holmes held a match point in the 12th game of the third set. And this showed the cool and calm that Mayotte is displaying these days. He saved the match point, went on to win the breaker. It's a match of a couple of former NCAA singles champions. Jimmy Connors won that title as a UCLA freshman in 1971. And then 10 years later, 1981, Tim Mayotte representing Stanford University was the NCAA singles titleist. $50,000 to tomorrow's winner in the final already is Yvonne Lendl. He'll meet the winner of this match, $25,000 to the runner-up. These two men, as was the case with Andres Gomez and Lendl already, assured of $13,000 for reaching the semifinal round. For Connors, he has the home court advantage as he tries to seek that elusive 106th singles title. He went to the finals last year, defeated by Yvonne Lendl. And, of course, it was against Lendl at uh, Boca a month ago where he stormed off the court and has yet to be penalized. Peter Kasavage is the umpire. And when we talk about differing conditions, there have been lots of complaints about these courts in that the stadium court is different from the outside courts. And Jim Kopp, who built this court, said, well, I was only asked to resurface one. And it was resurfaced to Jimmy Connor's specifications. He's the resident here, and he likes it. It's a bit of a slow, hard court. May out to the net and off a net core, the point to Connors. When Mayotte was a college kid at Stanford, he was given a wild card by Barry McKay to play the Trans-American San Francisco. He beat Connors, and that convinced him that he could become a pro. Interesting contrast in their career record. 105 singles titles, a record for Connors in men's play. Mayotte has won once. This is what Mayotte's going to do today, all day. He's going to say to Connors, pass me if you can. And if Jimmy can, then he wins. Good service game. Connors wins. Love on his serve to start the semifinal match. Jimmy Connors with some uh, strong serving. And we should point out by Collins, a wind has been a factor throughout this week's play. And uh, we've seen as many miss hits as uh, one might ever expect from this uh, outstanding field of talent. And it uh, might be a foul ball or two again today. It's blowing into Mayotte's face. good from here that's the center linesman he did not make the call This will be a second serve, and Mayotte has decided, obviously, I'm going in on anything. He pulled Connors wide to the forehand. Connors made a terrific get, but Mayotte was ready, cheating to the line for the winning volley. all Mayotte uh, at 6-3 looks even taller in contrast to his opponent Connors at 5-10 
Well, he's gotten skinnier and fitter. Look at a 31 inch waist. At 25, Mayock concentrating on improving his footwork and the weight loss is part of that. for Tim Mayotte, but that is the way Jimmy Connors returns serve. chance for Mayotte to break back low 30 well it's a miss hit he seems to hesitate in going in figures I might as well and Connors had trouble with the ball that swirled in the wind Three chances for Mayotte to break back. So Mayotte is keeping his cool. Look at him bouncing there to get position. And he knows he's going to go down the line. Never varies. Now Tim would like a forehand return. Look at him edge way to his left. Fifteen forty. Pat Lewis, Pat F. Lewis, net judge, first call of the day. champion and Mayotte sixth in the world rankings Mayotte currently number 17 Connors number four this is a permanent stadium here at Sanibel Harbor unlike uh, many of the facilities around the country where temporary bleachers are constructed it's a beautiful facility and we have around 4,000 with us today I've never seen anyone, with the exception of John McEnroe, apply this kind of pressure to Connors, and he's not backing off, even falling behind. Most players will say, well, gosh, down two, love. I better get a little more cautious. Not Mayotte this, this far. Late call. 
take to Fink on the line, and he's a good one. That will fall to second. 15 all. Mayotte's only championship, first, uh, as you see there, defeated Connors last time out in Philadelphia just at the uh, turn of the year. Beat him in their very first meeting when he was just leaving Stanford, and then uh, Connors ran off five in a row. But Mayotte's won singles title at Delray last year, Delray Beach, the Lipton International, was a profitable day or week, $112,000. It's an interesting duel. Mayotte trying to win that number two, his second, while Connors trying to end this uh, streak without a singles title that has uh, taken him back a year and a half. Meanwhile, Lendl comfortably back in the dressing room waiting for the victor and tomorrow's final. And Lando may actually, by this time, be on the golf course. He was going to play nine holes today, he said. Connors yet to come to the net. Mayotte busy. Double break point for Connors. Breaker saved by Mayotte. Tough to lob into that wind. Now for Mayotte, the problem is ball control. You see the way that ball is dipping in the wind. He has got to make the more precise shots, the volleys and the overheads. Where Connors with his heavy grounders has better control today. So the double fold and Mayotte again loses his service. 3-1 Connors. So one of the signs that this is a difficult time for Jimmy is this woman here, Gloria Connors, who built her son into one of the great tennis players of all time. She very seldom appears at tournaments, but I think the Connors family feels that somebody's got to spur Jimmy close hand. Oh. And he will tell you, mom knows my game better than anyone. She can pick up things and let me know. Gloria and her mother, Jimmy's grandmother, Bertha Thompson, started rolling the ball to him when he was two years old on the floor. And he would swat away. Connors uh, in the top three in the world from 1974 through 84 and now without a singles title has dipped down to number four in the world. Behind Lendl and McEnroe and Mats Villain. Once again, Mayotte is not going to give Connors any rest back there. Keeps following that deep. He's going to have a good afternoon. 15 all. Just wide. 
could see the wind drift that wide almost uh, anything down the sidelines tends to be caught that wind and if there's any English or spin on the ball carry it wide. But Jimmy is a very precise lobber and that is unusual that he misses one like that. again and a double break chance for Mayock. It's been a disadvantage to be on the service line in this opening set. Connors held a love game to start the match and then a series of breaks. Just one. Mayotte breaks Connors. That's four straight games. Service has been lost. It's 3-2 Connors. We pause for these words from your local station. Game. Break point against Connors. And he plays servant volley, his first advance to the net on the second ball. Now the wind had that ball. You see how he really had to flap at it to make any kind of play at all. It goes wide in this strange match. Four breaks in five games. Eerie indeed, and now Mayotte trying to hold serve for the first time. Look at how many times Mayotte's been up. Two breaks each on serve. appear to you that uh, Mayotte's attacking style has Connors rushing a bit? Well, I think so. Anytime a guy comes in on you that much, you've got to make your passing shots awfully good. Plus, he's so big, nearly 6'4", the reach of Tim Mayotte. 40 love. Ooh. Well, he didn't win the point, but there's an example of Mayotte's range at the net. Mayotte coming in. He doesn't get to the tee on the first shot. That's just too good a return, and he's going to get nailed. He was out of the play right from the spot Connors made his return. Mayotte is helped by the fact that he beat Connors the last time they played, and also by the fact that Connors has lost four matches this year in four tournaments. Game to Mayotte. We're even at three all. Connors lost to Mayotte at Philadelphia. He lost to Bradley Gilbert, the rising Californian at Memphis. He lost to Joachim Nustrom out at La Quinta. He's Sweden. had a big year, hasn't he? Yeah. 
And he lost to Lendl, of course, in Boca Raton. That's a tough play to make. I think McEnroe is the only player who can naturally force you on a first serve. the pattern but as well established Mayotte's going to charge on every second serve and he is not phased by the fact that Connors is coming in here too boy that was an awfully good attacking return off a good first serve Three all, opening set, 40-30. Oh. Well, Mayotte rallying from 40-love, it's Deuce. Now, the name of this game is Force, Force, Force to Mayotte take the return behind the baseline, go in no matter what. Put the pressure on Jimmy Connors' forehand, more suspect these days. Now that's the kind of miss hit that we've seen frequently during the course of the week. The wind, a uh, great deal to do with that. It's gusty. And Mayotte is against the wind, standing at the far end of the court. appeared to skid off the service line. The conditions are difficult. Swirling wind.
Tim Mayotte and Jimmy Connors, two service breaks each. And Mayotte now serving at 3-4. Welcome to Sanibel Harbor, the Jimmy Connors Tennis Center. Semifinals, Yvonne Lindell has defeated Andres Gomez in the other semifinal match and awaits the winner of this one, the finals tomorrow. We'll have that for you at 1.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 for you fans out on the West Coast. Interesting contrast in styles thus far. Return service well, you as see well the as anyone. Be Belleville burglar right here. That's how Connor steals so many potential aces. But Mayotte was in position for the backhand cross court that won the point nonetheless. 30-15. Not only is Connor's mother here, but Mary Mayotte, Tim's mother, is somewhere in the crowd. Tim, the youngest of eight children at Mayotte clan. Double fault, his fourth. I really shouldn't say she's here. I know she's in town, but she gets very nervous watching Tim play. It's possible that she's nearby watching television. a bigger serve and it figures his percentage would be lower than Connors. at all this year about Timothy Spencer Mayotte. That ball is with the wind. He makes the play, and he says, I'm still in it. Connors has a chance, but Mayotte kept fighting and fighting and fighting, and this is a new guy. This is agility. This is speed. This is fitness that he's never had before, and he's never been out of shape, but we'll talk about that in a moment. That Tim Mayotte and with his, his coach, power that's that right. hasn't been lost in all of this. Bill Drake and the group we call Team New England Bob Green, Buddy Schultz, and Tim Mayotte, and their coach, Bill Drake. For all. Now they won't miss many of those. This will not feel very good if you're riding with Tim Mayotte today. Again, you see that 
Mayotte doesn't seem to be out of any points. Skyhook by Connors. That's the trademark shot. Good angled volley. Mayotte will almost make the play. 40 love. And the game to Connors. When we return, Kim Mayock serving to stay in the first set. Enberg with Bud Collins at the Sanibel Harbor Resort near Fort Myers, Florida. Actually, technically within the city limits of Fort Myers. The semifinals. Sinesta, Sanibel Harbor Resort area. Welcoming Mayock and Connors to this semifinal match. Yvonne Lendl has already won. He'll be in the finals against the winner of this match. Oh. Well, that's one of those foul backs. Yes, Mayot serving to stay in this first set. 4-5. Oh. consolation bud but he was there he changed his tactics a little he stayed in the stroking rally and then sneaked in and had the play right in front of him watch uh, Mayot as he receives the ball I think he's still one of the few on the tour who says thank you each time a ball boy offers him a nice uh, nice toss several ball people have not recovered his fifth up in New York at Madison Square Garden semifinal day of that $500,000 Virginia Slims Martina Navratilova an easy winner over Steffi Graf West Germany 6-2-2 two, and two. and Hanuman Likova will play Martina tomorrow after defeating Chris Everett Lloyd in straight sets good deep volley by Mayot 30 all Bratilova and Manlikova. A big tournament at the Garden tomorrow in the finals. We'll have the ladies three weeks hence. Family Circle Cup, Hilton Head. Omeyat, a point away from five all. that run of lost uh, serves service breaks four in a row both men have settled down many stars in the audience today buddy Hackett enjoying the action this week Buddy was telling us yesterday uh, that uh, his new style, chip and chop, uh, has been very effective. Is that with chopsticks? <laughs> I don't know. It's one of his better routines, isn't it? Oh!
And Connors will lob with assurance and keep Mayotte just a bit off balance. That ball dying on Mayotte, and he slugged it wide. 30 love. Connors decides to play serve and volley on a second ball as he's done now three times today and the volley well could it be better and the game to Connors Tim Mayotte will be serving to force a tiebreaker when we return Tim Mayotte to serve trying to hold on and force Jimmy Connors into a first set tiebreaker may be dangerous business to start going in on the second ball against Connors at this stage. One of the tremendous competitors, and you see what he does with it. He's ready. Look at the positioning. Jump and James. Following our coverage here from Sanibel Harbor, it'll be the USFNG, the golf tour in New Orleans, Louisiana. Alvin Pete with a fine first round. Playing 36 holes today. Well, Mayotte is living dangerously on serve. Connors has had the much easier time holding in recent patches. all here in the 12th game the wind picking up Matt is going to come in to follow his serve and he'll be startled for just an instant the ball Get it off the net cord. So, a point to decide the set. Let's see how the Wiley Connors plays it. who was a circuit player herself in the amateur days, then a teaching professional. 
And Jimmy took just a little something off that return. That showed his skills in ball control, and Mayotte was groping and grasping for the half volley that wouldn't produce. Connors opens the second set. Measure that lob. Third love 30. May out again. Ever forward, ever forward. Keep going up. And you see him always moving his feet, always staying in balance. Oh, volley by Connors. As Connor decides this is a point he must have, and so he plays serve and volley, and he can volley very well. That little mannerism of Connor's, how many have copied it? That little blowing on the hand. Shooting hand. Mm. Today, taking a lot of time. Taking the net away from Mayotte, who's been dominating it. Look at Connors right up there. And he's moving up to win the volleying duel. Game to Connors. We'll return to the Payne Weber Tennis Classic after these words from your local station. Under sunny skies here in Florida, Yvonne Lendl has not lost a set in this tournament. 6-3 and 3 over Andres Gomez, the Ecuadorian Davis Cupper, earlier today. And we'll meet the winner of this match between Jimmy Connors and Tim Mayotte. Thank you. So for Mayotte, here's the crunch. He's lost three straight games, the longest run of either player. Behind Connors, 15 left. It's heavy pressure on Mayotte, though, because he has to make every volley very good. Now, that's a difficult volley to make. Down around the ankles, and he puts it in to an open corner. But can you keep doing that against Connors' style of returns? Mayotte has not tried that ploy, and we wonder if he will again. Well, here is a shot that he will not want to see over again. I'll tell you that. It's atypical of his game, and it went nowhere. 15 all. Those stretching, straining volleys are the kind we hadn't seen Timmy make until the Masters when he beat Yannick Noah. And I thought, boy, this guy looks different. And he said, Bill Drake, our coach, 
has really been working. He told me, sure, I was in shape to make a living at pro tennis, but I wasn't in super shape. And that's what they went on. Movement, fitness. Self-deprecating remarks from Connors. 40-15. Point away from one all second set. Connors won the first 7-5. Bill Drake has also been working with Buddy Schultz, who was a basketball player in college, not a tennis player. At Bates, a real late starter who's up to 44th in the rankings, and Bob Green, who in college was a Russian scholar at Boston University. <laughs> Nobody ever thought of them as tennis players, but he's been doing well, too. Oh, oh what a return by Connors. Connors feeling for the forehand and his footwork is so good he's always well positioned to make that returning blast. Jimmy Connors. He's been around longer than Chorus Line. <laughs> Got better legs, too. Goose again. This then becomes the longest game of the match. it long. Connors with his agility keeps the ball going somehow but it will drift wide. the smoke off the rackets. Jimmy is not going to let the ball touch the ground now. Very wisely so. He picks up a step by doing that, not letting the ball bounce. Do this again. Third of this game. Game point for Mayotte. To go one all in the second set. Connor seven five in the first. Professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. By Volvo, a car you can believe in. By Hayes, microcomputer products say yes to the future with Hayes. And by AT&T and long distance services, information systems, telephones, and computers, AT&T is the right choice. I'd say Matt was fortunate to get out of that one. When Mayotte 
said to me today in the dressing room, you can call the Bill Drake group Team New England. That's what we like. And Yvonne Lendl was there, and he said, well, I'm Team New England, too. I'm from Greenwich, Connecticut. He's saying that more and more he's yeah. feeling uh, roots there. Ah. Expressing them more and more makes you wonder whether or not uh, someday he will become a U.S. citizen. Doesn't well, want to well, answer it, does he? No, that's a tough question. Who <laughs> <laughs> eyeball, eyeball. Oh, we're seeing more volleying from Jimmy Connors than we have in a long time. I mean, you get up there, wink and blink, it's he who scores. Mayotte. But he's going to get drilled. 30 love. Really carried that from Connors left to right. Now shadows are intruding on the court to add to the difficulties. Percentage. Connors, as expected, a higher percentage rate, no aces, but may not surprisingly only one ace and five double faults. Not a high enough first serve percentage for a guy who's playing the way he is. Unforced error, 16 to 4. Connors has played immaculately. There's another case in point as he paints the line two in a row. Well, you see why Jimmy Connors whether he's going downhill or not, is a great champion. Mayotte has forced him to play better. And by forcing, look at two shots in a row like that. And this has elicited the fire from Connors. Oh, elicited. You must have been listening to Al McGuire during the basketball year. Yes, I heard that word from Al. That along with egregious. Solid shot from Connors to earn a triple break point here in the fourth game of the second set. Balance all the time. Flying like Raggedy Andy, but always in balance. May I trying to dig out of a love 40 hole. One, two in the second. Speaking of Al McGuire, just a reminder, folks, that a week from tomorrow is NCAA special. He'll predict the winner of the championship game. Interview with Dave uh, Robinson, the uh, outstanding young man from Navy, and more next Sunday. A week from tomorrow. Well, a couple of big serves. The answer for Mayotte. Get back 30-40. Mayotte. Look at that arching of the back. Now he needs one more. This is the point of the match for Tim Mayotte. Can't afford to fall behind 1-3 in the second of Connors. Mayotte was never so glad to hear fault call. <laughs> that wasn't the caller. The caller was Bob Kirby, and you can hear his voice all over the ballpark. Wow. So 
from Love 40 to Deuce for Mayock. The must point for Mayot. He got a net cord ball and closed in on it. Connors knew it was going down the line, was able to get the lob up. Mayot has been tough overhead. He's missed one. Reminded me of Ken Rosewall, how he trapped that ball so well, moved into position. Four straight points for Mayot after down low 40. And he does dig his way out. It's two all in the second set. Yeah, let's mark that one, bud, and see what impact it has on Connor's play. He had a chance to go up 3-1, already leading by a set. Just going to make him more determined. firmed up after coming out of that love 40 game. That's the best forehand he's hit today. So now it's Mayotte with a chance at a break. Jimmy Stretch. You won't see this play very often, where on the backhand side, he's got to reach out with one hand to make the play. And again, not letting the ball hit the court, getting it on the fly, and beating Mayotte. 15-30. Made a play like that, one of the greatest shots I've ever seen him make against Adriano Panada. U.S. Open 1978 to practically save the match. Peter Kasavage. Sounded like Connor said, are you sure? And he said, yes. He said, good call. <laughs> and a double break point now for Mayotte. Well, Mayotte in the last game was down love 40. Pulled himself out of it. Saved a serve. Now Connor's trying to spin the same magic. Never be a majorette, will he? Wow. The break to Mia, and he takes the lead in the second set, 3 2. On a big tournament down there in New Orleans. That action to follow. The semifinal match, Tim Mayotte, who has just broken Jimmy Connors to take the lead in the second set. What ten of the last eleven points? Right, that Mayotte got from coming out of Love 40 in the fourth game. He 
He's showing us why he's such an effective player on grass, why he always does well at Wimbledon. Right. Now he's in there, not quite inside the tee where he'd like to be, but he moves in. And it's a punch. That's all, just a punch. Not a big swing. from 4-2 in the second set. Well, Mayotte has worked hard. When the U.S. Tennis Association holds its annual meeting next week at Naples, Florida, very near here, he will be announced as one of the top 10 Americans in the rankings, the first New Englander in 60 years. I know you know the last. Alfred Chapin, who is also from Springfield, was ranked seventh. Mayotte, I believe, will be ranked fourth. New England is where the game began. On the line, Mayotte with a love game, so that means he's won 13 of the last 14 points since he rallied from love 40. Back in the fourth game, this set. Well, I said that that would make Connors more determined, and I don't doubt that that's what's happened. The question this year on Connors is, can he carry out the determination anymore? Trying to make it to the finals for only the third time in the last 22 tournaments. Last year, he made it to the finals of this championship on his home court here at Sanibel Harbor, lost to Lendl. Chicago, he had to uh, default because of injury. Right, he didn't play the final. <laughs> Mayak continues his run of points, 15 of 16. Now, Mayotte, who cannot beat Connors from the baseline, has realized it, has made Connors try to play his game, and he's not doing it as well as Mayotte, as we see with an errant approach. working on, on a unbeaten 1986. Of course, he missed a few tournaments because of that rib injury, chest injury. We hope to see both these men next week. We'll have coverage from Chicago, the Volvo. I understand Boris Becker expected to be in that championship as well as Yvonne Lendl. Yes, Boris having a tough year. next Saturday and Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern here on NBC. Now suddenly, this looms as a huge point for Jimmy. Second ball, 15-30. It's wide. A double break point for Tim Mayotte, who has won 16 of the last 18 points. You don't get many runs against Connors like that. Good serve, Jammer. Mayot, nevertheless, still a point away from 5 2 in the second. Who has played? 
But there was hesitation from Mayotte when he might have hit a smash. Let's see if we can pick that up. Here it goes right now, I believe. Yep, and Tim waits, and then should he have smashed? Well, it's Deuce. Hunter saving a couple of break points. or something making some unusual sounds changing his pattern gone from the one bleep to the two I think it's a tight webbed cormorant <laughs> there it is <laughs> actually uh, we understand uh, waiting for the doubles he's uh, concerned that uh, the doubles action which will be later tonight under the lights again Jimmy will like what he sees here because Mayotte miss hits the forehand return and Jimmy whaps it Set 7-5, but trails by a break. It's Mayot serving 4-3 in the second. And that last point of the last game showed Connor's grit. The way he stretched his arms out of their sockets. Seventy wow. times Mayot has been at the net. Play like a simplest strip in fall I haven't heard that one before. Set. Mayotte will show us that he can climb to the clouds too. The timing has to be just right. And even with these skilled 
professionals with the wind. It's a test every time you go up after that overhead. It's bobbing up there. Bobbing and dipping. Two points from scoring the match. Got a new net judge, Randy F. Fredrickson, and that's his first chance. back in action he was sculled by a shot in the other semi-final match today <laughs> triple set point may I fourth game it was Mayotte down low 40 he rallied five straight points to take that game then broke Connors to take the lead in the set Connors trying to repeat that pattern from low 40 to 30 40 with the set in the balance the call. to the USF and G golf tournament. We'll be coming back, but Collins and I will stand by to keep you updated with the progress on this Mayotte Connors semifinal. Point to Connors were 30 all. Second game. I to set a piece for the right to go on to the finals and meet Yvonne Lendl tomorrow. A oh. break point for Mayotte and certainly the momentum in this match has shifted to the young native of Springfield, Massachusetts side since that fourth game when he rallied from love 40 to hold his service. Now about three points ago, I don't know if Connors twisted an ankle or did something because he has suddenly stopped coming to the net all together maybe his left ankle before we return to the air he was testing the ankle he seemed unhappy and you see him flex it there
point away from one all. golf tournament some of the folks resorting to some blankets on the shade side and Tim may uh, recognizing once again they're gonna have to peel the crust off Jimmy Connors someday because he still has plenty of it made a couple of marvelous shots back in that third game to break Mayotte and take the lead as he fights to get into the championship tomorrow against Yvonne Lendl Dirty love Mayotte, but Mayotte is down a break. Connors, who hasn't been in a final in nearly a year. And should Connors make it, it would be against Yvonne Lendl. Jeremy Shales, the man who was in the chair when Connors walked out of that uh, semifinal a month ago. He is here at this championship. It'll be interesting to see whether he indeed would be the chair umpire tomorrow. Should that uh, matchup develop? Well, he ought to be. He's the professional in the cast. Break on that. Boy, I'll say. And Tim had cut down on his double faults. He had five in the first set. None since. Fifteen in this game, but he's down a break. Let's go back to New Orleans. Michelson and Calvin Pete. This is when I saw that ball hit the green. It looked like it was going to be extremely close. Look at this. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. And Calvin <laughs> Pete has the lead. What a shot. <laughs> Sinesta Sanibel Harbor Resort area. Jimmy Connors Tennis Center, and Jimmy Connors has just broken Tim Mayotte after Mayotte had broken him to pull even at three all Connors up a break at four three and serving at 15 love Mayotte with around 100 approaches so he's been attacking the entire afternoon may have taken a little out of him he double folded twice in his last service game won by Connors second time on game point for his seventh double fault he hadn't had any since the first set The winner meets Lendl tomorrow. Connors had scored so well with the lob in breaking Mayotte. That's Mayotte's first good lob. Mayotte really went at it with intention and followed it well to the net. And Lendl probably is sitting somewhere in a warm spot, enjoying these guys running themselves to death. And they got 102 times to the net. Remember, he is returning from a six-week hiatus because of an injury this tournament. So add those all up, and it may be having its effect. The determination of that 33-year-old veteran, Jimmy Connors. To beat Mayotte at Tim's game on that point. Jimmy's going to come in. Timmy's going to come in. So Jimmy comes closer. So does Timmy. And it's Jimmy. Who is now six points from victory. from New Orleans, our golf coverage right after this game, 40-15. It's long, aimed to Connors. He leads 5-3. In the third and deciding 
set. The winner meets Yvonne Lendl in the finals tomorrow of the Payne Weber Classic. Now back to golf in New Orleans. And it is now Love 40, match point, triple match point for Jimmy Connors, who found his younger opponent, Tim Mayotte, winning the second set 6-3 and pulling even three all here in the third, only for Connors to break back and now has three chances to settle it right here. One breaker saved by Mayotte. Connors trying to get to the finals of a Grand Prix tournament for only the third time in a year and a half. A year ago beaten in this championship by Yvonne Lendl. It'll be Lendl to meet the winner again tomorrow. And quick reminder, 1.30 our time Eastern Time here on NBC. There it is, Jimmy Connors. Yvonne Lendl will be the match in the finals tomorrow, the Payne Weber Classic. Connors wins it 7 5, 3 6, 6 3. The venerable Jimmy, Jimmy Connors on his home court disposes of Tim Mayotte in today's semifinals. For Buck Collins, Dick Hanberg, now back to Charlie Jones in New Orleans. On Boca West, Jimmy Connors in a semifinal match against Yvonne Lendl and a fifth set call that provoked a tirade. Connors furiously disagreeing with the call but receiving no support from the chair. Connors refused to play. Chair umpire Jeremy Shales eventually would follow Grand Prix rules and disqualify him. For whatever the reasons, Connors' behavior not to the level of the champion he has been. In frustration, he walked away, accepting defeat in a rare form. For Connors, winner of a record 105 pro tournaments, times have been unkind. He hasn't won in a year and a half. He has a chance today to break that personal drought. He's in the Payne Weber finals by way of yesterday.